In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can plot uh, city population data uh, using the duplicator in Cavalry and um, with that data coming in from Google Sheets. And so here's a, a little sort of one we made earlier. And as you can see, we've got things like Tokyo, obviously have a bigger ellipse here, and you know smaller cities have smaller ellipses. And all this is coming from data that we've imported here. So if I just bring this across, you can see this is our data. Um, now, I'm not quite sure how up-to-date these uh, values are, but um, you'll get the idea for this tutorial. Uh, we've got a column with the city, we've got their latitude and longitude, and then we've got their population. And what we're going to do is we're going to import this sheet and bring it into Cavalry and then use it to plot the positions and uh, dictate the radius of the ellipses with this population data. Okay, so to import the Google Sheet into Cavalry, it's very, very simple. Um, you just need to make sure that your um, sharing settings are set to anyone with a link. Uh, these can be anything you like. And then you can click this copy link and that will copy the URL to the clipboard. Um, one thing just to be aware of, um, if you ever have an extra tab or an extra sheet, um, this share button will not share the current sheet that you're on. Um, so the way to do that is to go to that sheet and then copy the URL from there. Um, so we can do the same here instead. We can copy this up here. And then the way to import that into the assets window is to right click, go import Google Sheet, and then we paste our URL. Um, now, I'm not going to hit OK because I've already got it in here, but obviously you can do that. And you can now see that we've got this uh, population asset, or this Google Sheet asset, and we need to bring this in to a comp. So let's start afresh here. So we're going to start with a default 16.9 comp. Let's just drag a uh, color in from the library here so just to set a different background. And we're going to create an ellipse now. Uh, the way to create a default ellipse is just to simply hold down Option or Alt and then click the ellipse tool here. And then for this example, we actually don't want the fill, but we do want the stroke. We'll just give it this, and then I'm just going to set the width to two. And we need to duplicate this. Um, we're obviously going to need lots of these. We've got, well, there's thousands of entries in that spreadsheet, but in this example, we're going to sort of go up to sort of three or 4,000. Um, the way to do that in Cavalry is via the duplicator. Now, there's a few ways we can create that. We can go to the quick add menu here. The shortcut for this, by the way, is control or command full stop. And we can type duplicator and then double click to add it. Um, the quick way is to select the ellipse shape, go up to the shelf here, and then click this icon for the duplicator. And what this does is by default, it'll give you a grid distribution. And this gives you a three by three. Now for this example, we don't want um, really any sort of distribution. We're going to take the latitude and longitudinal values from the data and use those to drive the positions of each ellipse. So the way to do that here is to actually pick a um, distribution called point. And now this looks like we've got one ellipse, but we've actually got three ellipses all sitting directly on top of each other. Um, let's just ramp this up to 50 to start with. You can see it got a little bit darker as they're all overlaying on top of each other there. And we can now use the shape position X and Y here to uh, drive these values. And we're going to do that from the data in the spreadsheet. So to use this data, um, we need to create a spreadsheet utility. Now, again, we could go into the quick add, we could type spreadsheet, we could add this and then we could drag our uh, asset into here. But the quicker way to do that, all those steps, is really just to take your Google Sheet asset from the Assets window and then drag it into either the Viewport or the Scene window here. Either will do. And then if I double click this, you'll see that we're getting exactly as I did previously. We've got the spreadsheet utility and we've connected our asset. And you can see that we've got this column title uh, attribute here. And this is basically giving us access to each of the columns in our data. Um, now I've got a column called country here that's actually hidden. It's just hidden here in the Google Sheet, but that will still show up in there. 
So let's start by working on our longitude. So with this, we can take a connection now. Now we've got that uh, the longitude data coming in. We can take a connection from population. This is the ID that we call at the top here. We can come down, whoops, and we can connect that to our position X. Now you'll see that we've got something happening straight away. If I just jump back into the data, our longitudinal values only go from uh, minus 180 to 180. Um, but our comp is actually 1920 pixels wide. So what we can do is on the spreadsheet, we have a feature where you can remap the values. So on the remapping, I'm going to click and I'm going to choose number range. So what number range does is it allows you to take a minimum and maximum value from your data and then remap that to a different minimum and maximum value. So in our case, we've got minus 180 to 180. And then because our comp is 1920, half of that is 960. So we want minus 960 as our minimum and 960 as our maximum. And you can see now that they're starting to be spread out across the width of our composition. Okay, so let's give this a name. Let's just call this uh, long. And then let's set up the latitude. So let's duplicate this. We'll give this a name. Just hitting enter to, to go into rename mode. If I double click latitude, we need to pick the latitude column. And for this, we want to make a connection into our duplicator. And again, this time we're going into our shape position Y. Now that looks like it's working, but latitude goes from minus 90 to 90. And then because our comp uh, height is 1080, half of that is 540. So let's just put the right values in here as well. So we've got minus 540 and 540. And you can see now we're starting to kind of see the Americas, uh, Europe and Asia over here. You can see that starting to um, appear. So now we want to start driving um, the actual population sizes and have that drive the um, ellipses radius. So let's just drop these down a bit temporarily. So again, I'm going to duplicate our spreadsheet here and I'm going to call this pop. And then I'm going to update our column title to be the population. Now, for this number range is not exactly what we need. And the reason for that is best explained via documentation. So this is our, this is coverage documentation. And this is for um, our utility called area range. So you can actually create an area range without a spreadsheet. Um, the two things are exactly the same. Uh, it's just that this is now embedded into our spreadsheet. And the reason we want to use an area range is best illustrated here. So this is the this is a, an illustration of the values being directly connected to the radius. So you can see here that this one, this ellipse has a radius of 20 and this ellipse has a radius of 100. And you can see in this example that this really distorts the, you know, when we're talking about population, you know, the area of this is much more than five times the area of this. If we switch that to proportionate values, you can see that that relationship is much, uh, much closer. So this this sort of gives you that feeling that this is maybe around a fifth of this. So you can just quickly see that these two, how these two values relate to each other. So the way we can use this in Cavalry is rather than a number range, we can swap this to an area range. And the way this works is it takes a maximum value and then we can remap that maximum value to a different maximum value. So in our case, we want our maximum value from the population. So I'm just going to copy the number in this spreadsheet. I'm just copying that with uh, command or control C. And I'm just going to paste that into here. So command or control V. And let's, I mean, we can pick any number here. I think 50 is probably going to be about right. So this means that our largest um, ellipse, in this case, Tokyo, will get a radius of 50. Now I want both dimensions to be the same. So I'm just going to connect our width to our height here. And now if I just close these down, I'm just looking for our lips. 
we can now uh, make a connection from our ID, sorry, our ID or our output. We can connect this directly into the radius down here. And so hopefully you can now see that Tokyo over here is our biggest and we've got all these other values are being uh, spread across depending on what's what. So we can now come in to our duplicator. So I'm on a um, MacBook Pro M2, so relatively decent machine. But if I bump this up to 3000 now, you can see that we've, you can really start to see how the land masses are formed globally and where the real dense populations are. So the next thing we want to do is start to animate this. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, the duplicator has the shape scale, so we could use this. Um, the other way that we can do it is we can actually take the remapping and we can remap, uh, sorry, we can animate these, this maximum dimension attribute. So let's just say we're at frame 30 here. I'm going to set a keyframe for that to be 50. And then I'm going to drop this right down to one on this end. And what you can see is now that we have animated these up. Let's just add a little bit of easing to this. So I'm just going to switch to the graph editor, hitting F to frame the animation curve. And then I'm holding Option or Alt just to click and convert these to Beziers. And obviously, if you hold Shift, you can constrain that to the horizontal. And you can just play around with these easings until you get something that you like. But if I hit Play now, you see that that's animating up. Now, they're all animating up at the same time. Um, I think we can make this a little bit more interesting. And the way we're going to do that, I'm just going to hold Option, Alt, and double click the duplicator. So it's the only thing we've now got in the attribute editor. Um, right at the bottom here, we've got the shape time offset attribute. And this basically allows us to create an offset for every ellipse that's using this animation curve. So we can offset this animation curve. So one thing you can do is you can right click on the attribute. We're going to choose add behavior. And for this example, I'm going to choose a stagger. Now all a stagger does is it takes a minimum value, assigns that to ID zero, and then takes a maximum value and will assign that to the very last ID. Um, so obviously we've got 3000 IDs in here. When dealing with time, um, it's often uh, preferable to start with a negative number. And this just means that all of your, none of your animations will start before frame zero. So what's gonna happen now is that each, each one will be offset over two seconds. Our comp is 25 FPS. And so if we go minus 50 frames, that's gonna be two seconds. And if I hit play now, you should see that these are offset from each other. Now we can come in and we can switch these so we can hit the graph, turn this other way around. And now the largest values will animate first with the smaller ones coming in behind over that two second period. Okay, hopefully that gives you some ideas about how you can bring data in and, and visualize that in Cavalry. Um, obviously we're using Google Sheets data here. Um, we also support CSV or JSON data. And then of course, we've got the JavaScript APIs as well, which allows you to communicate with other web APIs and, and bring data in externally that way. So I hope that's been useful. Can't wait to see what you create. Thanks.